Welcome. In this video, we start the number theory chapter, and we are in uh, section A, so chapter 4A, factors. We'll talk about what are factors, divisibility tests, and then finding all factors of a number. Let's go. What is a factor? Here are some examples to start. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are all the numbers that go into 12 evenly. The factors of 16, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. For example, I can take 16 and divide by 1, and that gives me a nice whole number, 16. Or 16 divided by 2 is 8, or 16 divided by 4 is 4. You know, one of the things about factors is, if you divide by a factor, you end up with a nice whole number. Now, 17 doesn't have very many factors. The only factors are 1 and 17. Something to note is that for every number, 1 and the number itself is always going to be a factor. So 12, I also saw 1 and 12 in there. Now, we have a few different ways of talking about factors. We might say that 3 is a factor of 12, or 3 is a divisor of 12. Sometimes we say 3 divides 12, and uh, you might also hear 12 is divisible by 3. So all of those mean the same thing. Let's talk about divisibility tests. So we'll talk about divisibility tests for the numbers 2 through 12 to determine if any of the numbers 2 through 12 uh, is a factor of some bigger number. So, for example, to start off easy, <laughs> uh, you've probably seen this before, how do you know if, if a number is divisible by 2? Right? You just look at the last digit of the number, and if it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then you know the number is divisible by 2. How about this one? Maybe you haven't heard this one before. The divisibility test for 3. The sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So if that's true, then the number is divisible by 3. So here are three examples. How about the number 87? Is 87 divisible by 3? Well, I add the digits together, 8 plus 7, and I get 15. And I see, oh, 15. I know that 15 is divisible by 3. So yes, 87 must be divisible by 3. How about this next one? When I, uh, 1,371. When I add the digits, 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 1, I get 12. And now 12 is a nice easy number. Of course, I can see, well, 12 is divisible by 3, so yes. All right, Here, here's something a little bit more challenging. What is the sum of those digits? Well, let's work it out. adding all the digits, we get 44. But perhaps you're not sure if 44 is divisible by 3 or not. Well, you know what you can do is you can just do the same trick again on 44. So I check 4 plus 4 equals 8. Now here's a situation where the number I ended up with is not divisible by 3. So since 8 is not divisible by 3, then 44 is not divisible by 3, and so my original number, uh, 712,563,578, that is not divisible by 3. Divisibility by 4. The last two digits, as a number, are divisible by 4. That's how you can tell if the number is divisible by 4. So take a look at this first example, 271,836. All I need are the last two digits. 36. Is 36 divisible by 4? It is. 36 is 4 times 9. So that tells me that the entire original number was divisible by 4. How about this next one? 3,982. All I need to do is focus on the 82. And let's see, if you're not sure, maybe you could try long division. Uh, you know, this is assuming you don't have a calculator. Uh, 4 into 82. Uh, 4 goes into 8 two times. That's 8. 0, bring down the 2. Oh, no, 4 doesn't go into 2, so uh, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> no. So uh, the number 3,982 is not divisible by 4. 5 is a very straightforward trick. You probably know this already. If the last digit uh, is either 0 or 5, then the number is divisible by 5. And 6 is interesting. 6 is what we might call a compound trick. I need to check if the number is divisible by 2 and 3. So I use my rules for 2 and 3. If the number is divisible by 2 and 3, then the number is divisible by 6. So let's check out 78. Is it divisible by 2? Well, it ends in 8, so check. It's divisible by 2. Is it divisible by 3? Well, 7 plus 8 equals 15. And, oh, 15 is divisible by 3. So yes, in fact, 78 is divisible by 
six. How about the number 552? Let's see, um, is it even? Divisible by two? Yes, check, divisible by two. How about divisible by three? Well, five plus five plus two equals 12. Ah, and we're in luck again. 12 is divisible by three. It's divisible by, uh, so uh, 552 is divisible by two and is divisible by three. So yes, it is divisible by six. The divisibility test for seven. This is a crazy, wonderful divisibility test. <laughs> so in words, here's what you do. Remove the last digit, double it, then subtract that from the remaining digits. The new number is divisible by seven precisely if the original one was. Okay, let's see how this works. So consider the number 182. I take off the two and I double it to get four, and then I subtract four from 18. So I think 18 minus 4, and that gives me 14. Ah, now 14, that's something I know. 14 is just 7 times 2. 14 is divisible by 7, and so 182 is also. So yes, 182 is a multiple of 7. How about 84? Okay, so I'll take off the last digit, and I'll double it to get 8. Oh, but then I'm left with 8 minus 8, and I get 0. Is 0 a multiple of 7? You know what? It is, because 0 is just 7 times 0. So that's okay if you end up with 0, and that tells me that 84, yes, is divisible by 7. Now how about 49? Maybe you recognize it already. 49 is 7 squared, so it is divisible by 7. Look what happens if we do our trick there. Well, let's see here. 9 doubled is 18. And so I figure 4 minus 18, and this is a little bit weird, right? I'm taking a smaller number, 4 minus a bigger number, 18. So I'm going to end up with a negative number, negative 14, uh, but that's okay. All that really matters, I mean, if you want to just think about that, the positive version of that, 14, uh, you can do your test on 14. And I see that, yes, 7 goes into 14 evenly, so yes, 49 works. 49 is divisible by 7. Here's our last example. 17,252, is this divisible by 7? Let's do our trick. I'll take off the 2, and I'll double it, and I'll figure out uh, 1725 minus 4, and that gives me 1721. Well, <laughs> I don't know if 1721 is divisible by 7 or not, so let's repeat the trick. We'll take off the 1 and double it to get 2, and then I take 172 minus 2, and I get 170. All right, is it clear yet? Maybe not. Let's go again. I take off the zero, and I double it. Well, doubling zero just gives me zero, and then I have 17 minus zero is 17. Ah, now I'm at a point where I can definitively say I know that 17 is not divisible by 7. Since 17 is not divisible by 7, then going all the way up to the top, my original number was not divisible by 7 also. How about 8? So the trick for 8 is the last three digits as a number are divisible by 8. So if I look at the last three digits, how about uh, 620? Is 620 divisible by 8? Well, let's just do some long division. 8 into 620. So 8 into 6, that doesn't go. 8 into 62, I think maybe 7 times, and I get 7 times 8 is 56. I'll subtract, and that gives me uh, 6, and then bring down the 0, 6, 0. Uh, 8 into 60, well, again, that goes uh, 7 times, so that's 56. Subtract, that gives me 4, and at this point I'm left with a remainder of 4, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a remainder of 0 for it to work, so no. The number 1,620 is not divisible by 8. The rule of 9, or the divisibility by 9 test, that's very similar to the test for 3. In this case, we look to see if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So how about this first example, 2,172? If I add all the digits together, I get 12. And uh, 12 is divisible by 3. 3, so actually this number is a multiple of 3, but 12 is not divisible by 9, so no in this case. 2,172 is not divisible by 9. Now here's an interesting kind of question. 
Let's suppose I have a number 176 something 2. What digit do I want to put in there to make that number um, actually divisible by 9? Let's add together the numbers that I do see. 16. So I want to put a number in that space that's going to make this into a multiple of 9. What's the next multiple of 9 after 16? Maybe 18? So I need to actually make another 2 in there. So let's make that guy 2. And then if I added those all together, and 18 is divisible by 9. Yep, so there we go. So my answer is 17622. 17,622. That's a number divisible by 9. How about 10? Probably the easiest rule of all. Uh, you just look. If the number ends in 0, the number is divisible by 10. Here's 11. This is another kind of crazy rule. It's a neat trick. Add every other digit. Then, add the remaining digits. The difference between those two numbers is divisible by 11, precisely if your original number was divisible by 11. Let's see how that works. So, I add every other digit. So, starting with the 9, I'll add 9 plus 6. 9 plus 6 equals 15. Then, I add the other digits, the 4 and the 2. 4 plus 2 equals 6. Then I look at the difference between those two things I got. And it doesn't really matter. You can take the, the bigger minus the smaller. Uh, 15 minus 6 equals 9. 9 is not divisible by 11. So, nope, the original number is not either. Just out of curiosity, you know what? How could I tweak this a little bit to make it actually divisible by 11? What if I did 9, 4, 6, 0? Then the 9 and the 6 together would make 15. And the 4 and the 0 together would make 4. So 15 minus 4 equals 11. And 11 is a multiple of 11. So here's a number that we can see that actually is divisible by 11. 9,460. How about this next example? It's only three digits, so adding every other, the 1 and the 6, 1 plus 6 equals 7. And then <laughs> the one in the middle, that's just 7. And if I take a difference, 7 minus 7, that equals 0. And is 0 a multiple of 11? Yes, it actually is. 0 is just 11 times 0. So that is good. So 176 is a multiple of 11. You see this a lot with three-digit numbers. Here's your general trick for three-digit numbers. If the middle is the sum of the outside, then your number is a multiple of 11. Here's another nice kind of quick example. What if I took uh, 2 and 3 on the outside and I put 5 in the middle? There we go. We've got a number that's divisible by 11, 253. Okay, this last example. Let's work this out. Take this sum of every other digit. So 7 plus 7 plus 3. That's 17. And then let's take the sum of the other digits that I missed. 2 plus 9 plus 1. That's 12. Oh, I can see it already. It looks like it won't work. 17 minus 12 equals 5, which is not a multiple of 11. So, nope. That big thing that I started off with is also not a multiple of 11. The divisibility rule for 12. The number is divisible by 3 and 4. So this is another compound rule. I check divisibility by 3 and by 4. And if it is divisible by 3 and 4, then it is divisible by 12. And let's do another fill-in-the-blank kind of problem. What can I fill the blank with to make the whole number actually divisible by 12? So it needs to be divisible by 3 and 4. Let's start with 3. So, I'll take the sum of the numbers that are already there. The sum of the digits already there is 21. Oh, and 21 is a multiple of 3. So, when I fill this blank, I want to keep the whole thing a multiple of 3. So, the blank looks like it can get filled with a 0. That would be good. That would make the whole sum 21. Or I could fill the blank with a 3. By going up by 3, that would make my sum 24 or I could fill it with a 6 or a 9. 
So by adding 0, 3, 6, or 9, I keep the, the sum of all the digits being a multiple of 3. Well, how do I ensure that it's divisible by 4? I need to look at the last two digits. So now the last two digits are going to be either uh, 1, 0, 1, 3, 1, 6, or 1, 9. Is one of those actually a multiple of 4? Ah, yes. 16 is. So, to make my number both divisible by 3 and by 4, I need to make the number 277,416. And that number is divisible by 12. Let's talk about the, the process of finding all the factors of a number. Now, one thing that'll help us is that factors appear naturally in pairs. So again, here are all the factors of 12. And look at this, I can pair up the 1 and the 12, because 1 times 12 is 12. And I can pair up the 2 and the 6, 2 times 6 is 12. And I can pair the 3 and the 4, 3 times 4 is 12. Let's consider the factors of 14. So here are all the factors, and again, these appear in pairs. The 1 and the 14, and the 7 and the 2. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14, 1 times 14 is 14. And the factors of 25. This is a little bit different because I have a number right exactly in the middle, just one factor down there. And you might think of that as having the arrow drawn to itself, the 5 times the 5. So 1 times 25 is 25, and 5 times 5 is 25. We can use this pairing in a natural way. Let's suppose that I'm working through finding my factors of 12, and I discover that 2 is a factor. Well, once I know that 2 is a factor, I can divide 12 by 2 to see that 6 is a factor. All right, and then I continue on, and maybe I discover that 3 is a factor. Once I know that 3 is a factor, I can divide 12 by 3 and get 4. So once you know one factor, you can immediately discover its pair by taking the big number, say 12, and dividing by your factor. Now, how do you know when to stop? Is there a, how do you know kind of what is the, the middle point of all this? And it turns out that square root actually helps. The square root of 12 is going to be right in the middle of all those pairs. And the square root of 14 is right in the middle of all those pairs. And in the last case, the square root of 25, oh, well, that's exactly 5, and that's the factor that we see in the middle. Let's see how we can use this pairing and the square root to help us with a bigger problem. Use a calculator to find all the factors of 156. So how do I know when to stop? I'll, I'll test 1, I'll test 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, I'll just test a bunch of numbers to see if they're factors, and I'll stop when I get up to the square root of 156. So that's 12.5. So I know, actually, all I need to do is test 1 through 12. And you can use a calculator, but we've already just talked about the, uh, the divisibility rules for 1 through 12, so let's just use divisibility rules. Okay, here we go. 1. 1 is always a factor. And once I know 1, then its pair is 156. All right, 156. How about divisibility by 2? Is 156 divisible by 2? Yes, it is, because it's even. So 2. And what's the corresponding factor? Take 156 and divide by 2, and we get 78. So 78. So I already know 78 is a factor also. OK, 156. Is this divisible by 3? I add these all together, and I get 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 6 is 12. Ah, 12, yes. That's divisible by 3, so 3 is a factor. And when I take 156 divided by 3, I end up with 52. So 52 is a factor. All right, moving on to 4. Let's try our rule for 4. Um, I need to test 56. Is 56 divisible by 4? And with a little bit of work or maybe some, some insight, you can see, oh, yeah, it is also. All right, so I put 4 down as a factor. And once I know 4 is a factor, I can take 156 and divide by 4, and I end up with 39. How about 5? Is 5 a factor? Uh, no, it doesn't end in 0 or 5. How about 6? Oh, for 6, I can look, I can see it is divisible by 2, it is divisible by 3, therefore it must be divisible by 6. So 6 gets listed. And when I divide by 6, I get 26. Okay, how about 7? 156, is that divisible by 7? Uh, let me do my little trick here. So I'll take 15, I double the 6 to get 12. So 15 minus 12 is 3. Nope, not divisible by 
uh, 7. <laughs> all right, had to do a little edit. I lost all my ink, so there it is up again. Uh, we just finished 7. It is not divisible by 7. Uh, how about 8? So really, there's no other way around it than to just try to divide 8 into 156. Let's try that. 8 into 156. Let's see, 8 goes into 15 one time, leaving a remainder of 7. 8 into 76. No, nah, that's not going to work. Oh. So you can either, you can use a calculator or some division to figure it out. So 8 does not work. How about 9? We'll add the digits. 1 plus 5 plus 6. And again, we get 12. 12 is not divisible by 9, so 9 is not a factor. 10, is 10 a factor? No. How about 11? 11, uh, I would add the 1 plus 6 to get 7. And the other digit is 5. No, they don't match up, so not divisible by 11. How about 12? So for 12, I look at 3 and 4. Oh, look at that. 3 and 4 are both factors of 156, so 12 must be also. And when I divide 156 divided by 12, I get 13. And at this point, we have listed all of our factors. My, I don't need to go any higher. Once I've reached 12, I know I'm done. And so my factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, 13, 26, 39, 52, 78, and 156. And that's a good place to stop. We've finished 4a. We've talked about the factors of a number. We've talked about divisibility tests and this uh, method for finding all the factors of a given number.